Welcome to Home and United Methodist Church, located in Los Angeles, California. We are a church that believes in the Word of God as it is manifested in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We believe in the Holy Bible, and we trust that there is a word of hope, instruction, and healing for us all. Thanks for joining us today, and let's journey together as we follow God. Amen. 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 A hymn to freedom. Welcome to the Holman United Methodist Church worship experience. It is so good to see all of you in the sanctuary. We are so thankful for those of you who are joining us on our YouTube channel for we just heard a hymn to freedom. In Today, we will be exploring various dimensions of freedom as a person of faith, various dimensions of freedom in the power and the presence of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, various dimensions of freedom of God the Father, various dimensions of freedom of God the Holy Spirit. We are thankful that we are here gathered we have the freedom to gather. And I am glad that we, as people of faith, are called to worship. But I'm just a... I cannot be called. I'm just a... Um, Lord, I cannot tell others about you. You know that sometimes I mess up. It doesn't matter. I still love you. 
I will always love you. You are called. When did this happen? Before you were baptized, before you were born, before you were created. You are a part of my story that I am writing on the hearts of all people. I am called. You are called. We are called. The Ministry of Music, the Hallman Singers, with the song, Praise Him. Our invocation, 
eternal God, whose provision for us is generous and compassionate, and whose with us is total commitment in love of you, of neighbor, and of self. Keep us from withholding any part of ourselves from obedience and loyalty to you, so we may be free to give genuine welcome to all people. To your honor and glory, amen. Amen. The ministry of the word, the ministry of music continues with the Hallman singers and Amanda vocal duo. And their rendition will be, God has smiled on me. Praise the Lord. Our scripture this morning is found in the New Testament, 
Galatians 5, 1 to 6. Reading from the Black Methodist Bible, I invite you to listen and follow along as I read the scripture. Christ has set us free for freedom. Therefore, stand firm and don't submit to the bondage of slavery again. Look, I, Paul, am telling you that if you have yourselves circumcised, having Christ won't help you. Again, I swear to every man who has himself circumcised <clears throat> that he is required to do the whole law. You people who are trying to be made righteous by the law have been estranged by, from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. We eagerly await for the hope of righteousness through the Spirit by faith. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We'll now have the Ministry of Music by the Harlman Singers and Amanda Vocal Duo, Center of Joy by Richard Smallwood, soloist Jules Green. After which, the next voice you will hear is that of Reverend Dr. Ken Walden with the sermon today, Jesus has set you free. Fine. 
pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streets. The voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, 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 oh Jesus, Jesus, you're the center of Scripture comes to us from Galatians, the fifth chapter. According to Galatians, the fifth chapter, the first verse, the first sentence, we find these words. It is for freedom that Jesus Christ has set us free. Jesus has set you free. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the gift of fellowship. We thank you for the gift of song. We thank you for the gift of music. We thank you for the gift of your holy Bible in your holy church. As we enter into this sermon moment, we ask you to allow us to preach your word, hear your word, and even obey your word. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray, and the church can feel free to say, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Jesus has set you free. This is the letter from the Apostle Paul, and I believe this letter still applies to each and every one of us today. Jesus has set you free. The Apostle Paul was prompted to write this letter because during his lifetime, he started seeing and hearing and observing major arguments, arguments 
about law versus grace, arguments about various traditions and customs, arguments, heated arguments about who were correct and incorrect, who was living holy and who was living sinful. The Apostle Paul wrote this letter because he wanted the readers, he wanted followers of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he wanted us to realize that Jesus sets us free. Now, do not get me wrong, there are some elements of value to traditions and customs. Do not misunderstand me. Traditions and customs, they can give significant meaning to groups of people as they navigate this human experience. Yes, we have traditions and customs during certain holidays that we often practice, we often celebrate. We have traditions and customs during different days of the week or certain months of the years. We have different traditions and customs during specific seasons of our lives, uh, whether we're talking about as a baby or as a toddler, as a teenager, adulthood, yes, traditions and customs, they do have some valuable elements in our human experience. But if we are also honest with ourselves, there are some traditions and customs rather than helping us to advance Unfortunately, there are some traditions and customs that can hinder us. There are some traditions and customs rather than helping us to live our lives leaning forward. Some traditions and customs can hold us back. Even within our faith, in the Apostle Paul, he identified, he noted some tradition and customs that were holding people back. Jesus has set you free. What are some things, what are some traditions and customs that you may have been doing that's been holding you back? What are some things that's not been affirming you, pushing you forward? But what are some things that's been holding you back? As people of faith, we should not only hear it, but we should live it each and every day, Jesus setting us free. And it is not just one time Jesus sets us free, but on a daily basis, Jesus not only sets us free, but Jesus is setting us free every single day. It is such a sad scene when we find individuals who live their lives in prison. It is such a sad scene and a sad story when individuals can give you not one reason, not two reasons, not three reasons, but dozens of reasons why they are unable to live their lives as freely as they ought. Uh, yes, sometimes a person will blame an individual, blame traditions and customs, will give a laundry list of reasons why they are not living in freedom to the fullest. I suggest to you that there are some people who have felt more complacent without freedom than with freedom. As people of faith, we have to be very, very careful. We have to be very, very careful that our lives are primarily dictated and guided by our faith rather than other items in life. 
We have to be very careful that our lives, that our speech, that our attitude, that our movement is guided by the freedom we have in Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, even for Christians, their faith, sometimes our faith, will take a secondary role and other customs and traditions will be primary. Be careful, be careful, be careful not to allow other things to primarily dictate our lives. Other things such as nationalities, other things such as genders, other things such as sexual orientation, other things such as race, other things such as ethnicity, other things such as sororities, other things such as fraternities, other things such as political affiliations can dictate and influence our lives if we are not careful much more than the freedom that we have in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Even such things, those things Paul, the Apostle Paul began to see. The Apostle Paul began to see and he was quite disturbed reminding people, and I think that it's good for us to be reminded that Jesus sets us free. And the major component in our lives that should be dictating and guiding us is the power and the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are totally free, or freer than you would like to be, what are 10 things that you would do? What are 10 things you would do? Think about that for a moment or write a few things down. What are 10 things you would like to do? Don't think of excuses. Don't think of the reasons why you can't. The Apostle Paul wants us to not only talk about freedom, but live into our freedom and doesn't want anything to hold us back. Perhaps, perhaps the Apostle Paul remembered 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, the seventh verse. Because one of the things that the Apostle Paul started witnessing and seeing of people arguing about the tradition and the customs of circumcision an act that one could see with their eyes. Maybe the Apostle Paul knew according to 1 Samuel 16th chapter around the 7th verse when God informed God's people that humanity will look on the outside but God looks at the heart, looks at the inside. Let us not be so distracted about what goes on the outside. Let us not be too distracted by bumper stickers that we see on people's cars. Let us not be too distracted by symbols and signs we see on people's shirts. Let us not be too distracted by letters people may have in front of their name or behind their name. Let us be more concerned about people's heart. I would like to share with you that I believe that Jesus has set us free for many things, but I will identify at least three. Number one, Jesus has set us free to love God. Time and time again, from the Old Testament to the New Testament, 
we are informed, we are reminded to love God. Love God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls. We find that according to Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter around the fifth verse, we are informed to love God with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, with all of our souls. Again, in Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, we are informed again to love God with all of our mind, with all of our hearts, with all of our souls. Again, in Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, the third verse, as if we did not read it or understand it. But again, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, the fifth verse, Deuteronomy, the 10th chapter, the 12th verse, Deuteronomy, the 13th chapter, the third verse, we are informed to love God. But even beyond the Old Testament, we find it time and time and time again, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ informing us to love God. Matthew, the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter, the 37th verse, Jesus informs us to love God. Mark, the Gospel of Mark, the 12th chapter, the 30th verse, Jesus informs us to love God with all of our heart, with all of our soul. Church, Jesus has set you free to love God. But yet, in our human experience, the enemy does not want you to love God. The enemy would prefer for you to love your house, your home. The enemy would prefer for you to love your home because the enemy knows that your home cannot love you back. The enemy would want you to spend all of your time and all of your attention and all of your resources and all of your energy worshiping your home. But if the enemy cannot convince you to love your home, the enemy will put something else in front of you. Maybe your automobile. The enemy would want you to give all of your attention, adoration to your automobile, all of your energy to your automobile. The enemy doesn't want you to love God because the enemy knows that if you love God, God will increasingly love you back. If you love God and open your heart, open your mind and adore God and worship God and spend time with God, miraculous things can happen. No, the enemy would prefer that love to be directed toward your car, your automobile, because the enemy knows that your automobile cannot love you back. See, the enemy puts all these other items and things in front of our faces. The enemy does not want you to love God. The enemy would prefer to hinder you and hold you back because the enemy knows when you and God in love appears, you become much freer than the enemy likes. Jesus has set you free to love God. But that is not where it stops. Jesus has also set you free to love your neighbor. Your neighbor. We have a lot of neighbors in Los Angeles and in the surrounding areas. We have a lot of neighbors who do not look like us, think like us. We have a lot of neighbors who may not act like us. But Jesus says, love your neighbor. The enemy does not want you to feel free to love God. And the enemy does not want you to feel free to love your neighbor. The enemy would prefer for you to spend your time 
arguing, fussing, fighting, in all kinds of battles. It is so sad when a person's first reaction to his or her neighbor is to immediately fight. It is so sad when a person's mode of operation is to immediately fight. Maybe the words, maybe the lessons, maybe the message never really entered their ears, really never touched their hearts that Jesus has set them free to love their neighbors, to love their neighbors. It is freedom to love. It is freedom to care. It is freedom to forgive. It is freedom to have mercy. That takes incredible freedom. Jesus has set you free to love God. Jesus has set you free to love your neighbor. But also, Jesus has set you free to even love yourself during these times of our lives. Unfortunately, we have millions of people who are inflicting harm on themselves. And unfortunately, it is starting at a young age. I remember when I was getting my PhD, one of my classmates, she was in the program a year or two earlier than me, and I was asking her <clears throat> what she was doing for her dissertation. She responded to me and she said that she was doing her dissertation on teenagers inflicting harm on themselves. And I was a little surprised. I responded that, well, I didn't know that was a phenomenon. And she looked at me graciously and she said, Ken, there's millions of teenagers who are cutting themselves with knives. She said, if we look a little deeper, there are millions of teenagers who are engaged in all kinds of dangerous behaviors, not toward other people, but primarily toward themselves. As people of faith, Jesus has set us free to love God, to love our neighbors, and also to love ourselves. Be kind to yourselves. Be gracious to yourselves. Teach others to love themselves, not in a selfish kind of way, but in a healthy kind of way. Too often, the enemy can be the two last alphabets Phonetically speaking, me. Jesus has set us free to love God, love our neighbors, and love yourself. Jesus informs us to love your neighbors as yourself, indicating be good to yourself in every sense of the word. But see, the enemy doesn't want you to love God. The enemy does not want you to love your neighbor. And the enemy does not want you to be free to love yourself. The enemy wants you to join in harming yourself, holding yourself back, hindering your own self. That is one of the reasons why I like tennis. Because in tennis, when you play tennis, you're really playing against, on some level, 
yourself. You don't even need the opponent to do anything if you keep hitting the ball out. The enemy doesn't have, or your opponent doesn't have to touch you at all, like football or basketball. In life, we often have to keep ourselves within boundaries. In life, yes, we have opponents, but we have to make sure that we are good to ourselves. Lastly, although some of you may not agree, or some of you may agree, but you don't want to hear it, but I have to say it anyway. Jesus sets us free to love our enemies. It was already quiet, but I think it got more quiet. Or quieter. Jesus sets us free to love our enemies. According to the Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, Gospel of Matthew, the fifth chapter, around the 43rd verse, Jesus informs us to love our enemies. Do not be imprisoned by hate. Hate has sent a lot of people to prison, literally. But hate has even imprisoned many more people, symbolically. Jesus has set you free from hate. Love your enemies. Be gracious unto them. Jesus has set you free. For if you are not freed by Jesus to love your enemies, guess what? We have allowed our enemies to control us, to influence us, to impact us in unproductive ways, in unhealthy ways, Jesus has set you free to love your neighbors, to forgive your neighbors, to be merciful to your neighbors. That does not mean to allow your neighbors or your enemies to take advantage of you. But that just means to love them. That does not mean to allow your enemies to walk over you as if you were a carpet or a rug, but that just means to love your neighbors and your enemies. Jesus has set you free. My prayer for all of us is that none of us will remain in any kind of symbolic prison. And the church says, amen. amen. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for setting us free. And Lord, we rebuke the enemy in whatever forms it may show itself. Thank you for setting us free. And thank you for reminding us what is offered in our freedom with you. We pray for the poor and the poor in spirit, the rich and the rich in spirit, the sick and the sick in spirit. Lord, someone needs to be reminded and informed that they are set free not to love items or things, that cannot love them back, but they are free to love you, their neighbor, themselves, and even their enemies, so they can avoid being imprisoned by hate and resentment. Lord, thank you for freedom. Thank you for love. Thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. 
In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we pray. And the church says, Amen. Praise God. We thank you for that sermon uh, by Pastor, by Reverend Dr. Ken Wallen. Uh, the flowers on the altar given by Camille and Tommy Wolfer in joyous celebration of our 51st anniversary on this day, June 26. Praise God for his grace and glory. Let there be many more years to come. Let us also pray for the bereaved in celebration of life. Details for the longtime Harmon member, Melanie Lorraine Jeter Hayes, appending. Please keep Jack Hayes and family lifted up in prayer. Services for the longtime member, Joyce R. Jones will be held on July 5th at 9.30 a.m. at Inglewood Park Cemetery Galleria Chapel. Please keep the Jones family lifted up in prayer. With love, we remember in prayer Bill and Dolores Campbell, William Kennedy and family, and we also want to pray for the people of Ukraine and Russia. May peace, may peace exist in that region. Youth Bible study will be on Friday, July 1st at 6 p.m. Church council meeting Saturday, July 2nd at 9 a.m. Bible study Thursday, to Thursday at 1 p.m. Prayer service Friday, 7.30 a.m. Adult Sunday school classes Sunday, 9.30 a.m and children's ministry would be continuing on Sundays. We will now have the offerings and tithes. Amen. Before our acknowledgement of the offering in tithes, we are, we are appreciative of Debbie Mitchell for continuing our children's program, particularly as we are um, in the virtual season. I ask and remind all of you to visit our website and our, you will find our children's ministry content and materials there. For more information, please contact our church and Debbie Mitchell will, will love to respond to any questions uh, that you may have. Also, our youth Bible study for the month of July are on Fridays on uh, Zoom and that will be July 1st, July 15th, and July 29th. Our student intern, Francis, will be leading those Bible studies July 1st, July 15th, July 29th at 6 p.m. Also, we will be celebrating our students. These are all students because we acknowledge they had a rough year during this season of COVID. So for all students, grade school, undergrad and graduate school, all students, we, we will have a ice cream social on Saturday, July 9th from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday, July 9th. We will have an ice cream social here at the church under the canopy we will have a very, very good time. That will be led by our student intern, Francis. Come one, come all, to celebrate and encourage our uh, students. We will have a good time. I'm looking forward to that fellowship together. Now open your ears, open your eyes, continue to open your hearts and receive this blessing. May God continue to bless you, keep you, protect you, direct you. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to renew you and redeem you. May the Holy Spirit continue to inspire and encourage you and may you experience more freedom, freedom to love God, love your neighbors, love yourselves and even your enemies. 
now and forevermore. And the church says, amen.